All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. We're kind of coming to the home stretch here for our Quackit.com Bootstrap 4 tutorial videos. I'm up to list groups. And as you can see, list groups allow you to display complex lists with custom content, all with a distinct style and function. In Bootstrap, list groups is a component that styles unordered lists in a particular way. Again, kind of the key point there is unordered lists. This paves the way for creating more complex lists with custom content without getting bogged down with presentation issues. So to create a default list group, notice our class is list group. For the UL and for each LI, it's list group item. And this is what we get. Now, just taking a look at that doesn't seem like really all that much. You know, again, sometimes I think you might look at these things and go, well, that's all fine, but I don't see exactly what that buys me over just using a standard type of list group. Well, again, when you look at it, you can see it almost looks like a table, for lack of better words, with what's been put around it here. You can add badges to list groups. Again, there you go. And it's not so much do you want to do this, it's the fact that you have the ability to do this if you want to. Okay. So we come through here. And, you know, again, notice they, they've got these boots are made for walk and put your boot. This is the kind of silly stuff that they put in here. But let's say, for example, what if we put in here first place? And for first place, you get 100 points. And second place, and for that you get 75 points. Third place, for which you get 50 points. Fourth place, for which you get 25 points, and below fourth place, for which you get 10 points. Now to me, that's a little bit more reminiscent of something that you'd actually see, okay? All right. You can use Bootstrap 4's list group item action for linked list items. Linked list items result in the whole item being clickable, not just the text portion. To create a linked list group, swap the UL tag for a div and the LI for A's. Pretty simple. Again, no UL, you've got a div instead, no LI's, you've got an A instead. Again, you've heard me say this, more than on more than one occasion one of the reasons i like working with this is that in many ways it is fairly intuitive Oops. and again you can click anywhere the eleanor put your boots on was made the active class. Okay, that's why it's in blue. You can also use buttons instead of links. All right, it won't really look that much different. So I'm not gonna go through that one. You can disable one or more of these. So again, now notice that the Eleanor put your boots on has been disabled. So I could put my mouse on any of these except when I put it on the Eleanor, you can see what happens to my icon. And that's anywhere in here. As we found with many of the things that we've been working with, you can use the contextual classes here so that if you want to add color, okay. List groups can contain other HTML elements as well, and you can make it all clickable if it's nested inside of an anchor element. Bootstrap 4 has the list group 
item heading class for headings and the item text class for text okay you'll notice the fact that the headings are, again are going to be bolded and they're a bigger font all right that's pretty much it then for media objects let's jump into cards now cards are a new thing in bootstrap 4 in many ways cards have displaced um, what were called wells and a few in panels I believe and a few other things that were available in bootstrap 3 so one of the big differences between bootstrap 4 and bootstrap 3 is bootstrap bootstrap 3 took advantage of things called panels and wells where bootstrap 4 those are gone they've been replaced with cards so they formally define here a card as being a container with light styling that you can place virtually any content into. And there are a lot of different styling options available with these. So to start with, as mentioned here, to create a basic card, you apply the card and the card block classes to the element or the outer. So if we look at this, now this may very well not look that different from some of the other stuff that we've just gone through. And that's one of the things good, bad, indifferent, whatever you want to say about Bootstrap, about Bootstrap, and that's the fact that they give you multiple ways of doing the same thing. So there's the heading and there's the list item, okay? And it's got a button at the bottom, which is right there. You can add a header or a footer by adding a div and putting the header or the footer in there. Again, ideally, when you're going through this, you're not thinking this is a waste of your time to go through this or to listen to me go through it because there's just so many different things to learn. It's not possible to sit down and in one at one sitting, so to speak, to learn all this stuff. You can apply the card reader class to any HTML header element. All right, so anything H1 through H6. So notice we've got an H3, and we've got an H4. You can see the different look that it gives us. You can also add a navigation pill or tab to a card. Kind of an interesting one here. You've seen adding some of these things in here before, but this is where I think at least the word card really comes into play. Looks like when I did this last time, I lost my div for my class equal container. So I want to put that back in there. And you notice they haven't put any alternative content in here. All right. And they took the go-go and they made that disabled. But again, when you've got limited real estate, you could put different, <clears throat> different textual material inside of here if you were so inclined. You can add pills. Again, not that that's a big thing one way or the other. By default, as mentioned here, the card block class has padding, which provides, you know, it, it's been set up to be more aesthetically pleasing. Okay. To create flush content, as they say there, don't put the content inside of a card block. All right. Rather, remove the card block and nest it in its own div. And when you do that, it's going to look it won't have the padding, so it'll look more, <clears throat> for lack of better words, kind of pushed together. All right. You can have content such as images line up flush with the top of the card. You do that by using the card image top or card image bottom classes. So you can see there's no padding at all here on the top. You can add list groups to cards with the list group flush class to flush it against the card's border. I'm not showing these because ideally, at least, 
you're going to find these fairly intuitive yourself. <clears throat> you can have the card link class to display links inside of cards and you can see them. You can align by using a text left, text right, text center, text justify, and a text no wrap. Our contextual colors that we've talked about before. Okay, you can put border colors in where you just put a color around the border. Image overlay, as the author says here, you can apply a background image to a card and then have the text appear over the top. So again, this would be done for effect. Make sure if you're going to do something like that, you've got an image and a color that you're using for your font where it will show through. And again, that's typically done for effect. Watch, that's the kind of thing that you want to watch over doing it. Cards are filled the horizontal space are filled by default. It says you can change the width using CSS. You can do it using a grid. You can create card groups. Notice card groups allow you to present multiple cards as though they're one element with equal widths and equal heights. You do that using the card group element. It says if it doesn't appear correctly, it's probably because you're looking at it on something like a smaller phone, all right, where it's not going to really make much sense. Card decks, then, are similar to card groups, except the cards inside the decks aren't attached to one another. Okay, you see the space in between. Card columns or bootstrap columns enable you to display multiple cards, each inside of a column, each card stacked on top of one another via the card columns element. All right. So cards are new in Bootstrap 4. They replace panels, wells, and thumbnails that were available in Bootstrap 3. All right. So, we have done list groups and we have done cards. It's time to go in and do the responsive embed and carousel. You can responsibly scale videos and other media to their containing block. And again, all of this in one form or another has to do with aesthetics and for making something look as professional as possible. So as mentioned here, Bootstrap's responsive embed component provides an easy way to scale videos, slideshows, etc. They can be used on iframes, video, object, and embed elements. To apply them, wrap the element within a div along with the embed responsive class. So here's an example. But notice what we have here. Right. We've got the video, we've got the picture inside of there, etc. No need to use a frame border equals zero because that's provided automatically for you. Now that was very short, simple, and sweet. Let's look at the carousel, and these are biggies. We've talked a little bit about carousels. I showed you an example before. I do want to run through these. As it says, add scrolling images or text to the website with a bootstrap carousel component. It enables you to add scrolling images and text that slide in, pause, then slide out. So they give their own example here. Again, I don't have their videos or their uh, pictures that they show here, but you can see what this is like. So let's grab this and paste that in here. We'll again remove all this UL stuff that we had before. Get back to here. Paste this in, but before we do that, let's try something. I have no idea if this is going to work and if it does, how well it will work, but just to try something different here. We're in Google. Let's go to Google Images and let's put in Nature Scenes. 
right? And we'll try to find some that look like they're fairly the same size. These two are. So I'm going to save the image here as, and we'll save this as, how about nature one? Got JPEG, we'll grab this one, which was the same size. And we'll save this image as nature2.jpg. And let's see if we can find another one that's about the same size, 1920 by 1080. There's another one. And we'll call this one nature3. All right, so we have those now, okay? So I'm going to come in here, and I kind of like that one first. So even though it's called Nature 3, I think we're going to put that one first. So our source is going to be images, nature 3, you remember, and then images, nature 2, and we'll end it, we'll just flip those two. So this will be images, nature 1 one okay and let's take a look and see what that looks like you saw again I put no code in okay there's my image and there it goes you can adjust the speed you can adjust a lot of different things in here as you're going through this So to create a basic carousel, this is the kind of thing that it's going to be imperative that you go back and read this. All right. Apply the dot carousel and the dot slide to your out outer container for the scrollable content. Wrap all items in a carousel inner and give each item a carousel item class. Also apply the active class to one of the slides. Otherwise, the carousel won't be visible. So that's your starting slide. To add previous to next controls, you use an anchor link with the carousel control prev or carousel control next. Also add a span with a carousel control prev icon or carousel control next icon. To cater for screen readers, add spans with the words previous or next so that it's easier for them to figure out what's going on. All right, I'll tell you what we'll do is Try to make this as simple as possible. I'll grab all of their stuff here, copy it to the clipboard, and I'm going to just paste it right here. But I want to change, ah, I guess we can do it like this. So let's see. We'll get rid of these. I'm just going to keep this. and that, and this, and get rid of all the other stuff that we had in there. So I can take this and replace, whoops, I can replace the source tags that are in there. So there's the first one. Here is the second one. And again, if I've done this correctly, whoops, what happened there? If I have done this correctly, what's going to happen is now we're going to end up having in here We're going to end up having previous and next arrows and well we'll see if we have the words and the arrows or just the arrows there they are so now we can make it move at our leisure and again this if you don't like the size of this or whatever this can all be fixed using your own CSS see it still goes magically so to speak by itself but I can back it up at any time I can make it go you know, in either direction at any time now with what I've just added. You can add indicators. I 
like this is just smaller than what we saw before. You can put captions in, and a lot of times you'll want to add some kind of a caption in here. So notice, first slide, you know. Uh, let's see, what do we have in here? Let's try to put one of these divs in. So in our first one that we have right here, we'll use, we'll use that one. And we'll put a div, and this will say, first slide, this is the first nature scene. I could put in two other ones. I don't see the need for doing that. There we got it. Again, you notice the other two don't have any writing with them. Okay. I don't see any reason why we couldn't even make that hyperlinks if we wanted to, to link to other pages or whatever it is we wanted to do here. So Bootstrap 4 versus 3. 3 uses item for each carousel item. Bootstrap 4 uses carousel item. The idea was for this, again, to be even more semantic and more intuitive. All right, so I think we've finished up with these four. So we've got our last four to do. So when I come back, we will do tooltips, popovers, scroll spy, and templates. And I think we'll also go over the Bootstrap 3 versus Bootstrap, Bootstrap 4, and that'll finish up this tutorial. So we'll come back then and look at some of the examples that were in here. All right, so that's what I'll be doing shortly.